Namaste, beloveds. This is Motherhood Wisdom, Valerie Ames, Tia Ma'at. She has so many names, so it seems. Um, the I am. I am. <laughs> I have entered a space that is so silent and so peaceful that it has allowed me to tap into a very ancient consciousness that has a message for this age, this time, um, and it's very deep. So um, it really concerns the sacred masculine and sacred feminine or the divine masculine and the divine feminine um, that resides inside the one consciousness, inside the one body. Um, and I've been told to start it off with this music. So... Um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play this. And this is Mariah Carey and Luther Vandross. And here we go. And in this dream, this is was my endless love. Waiting for me. And I'm going to put this in the notes area, just because it's so, it, it fits. This is a candlelight vision if you want. Because 
that's where I'll stop it. And this will probably be um, two videos simply because my computer um, will only allow me to do so much um, because of storage and such. Um, this, I'll just get into it um, and just let myself, let myself go. Um, the energy that I've tapped into is much more ancient than the the story, the store of members, the store of remembered memories of Oset and Osiris. But it is through this vein of consciousness that has been tapped. So it is from this perspective that um, what I am about to share has been formulated, has been stored, has been given um, for this reason, for this moment in what we will call this cycle, this season, this age, this time. This is the water, this is the water bearer era. This is the age of Aquarius. This is the age of alchemy returning, the divine alchemy returning into our awareness and consciousness as we are awakening. And it is the ultimate of identities. It is the ultimate in conscious streams. It is the ultimate dream. To awaken inside. It is the this portion is the portion of the midwife. It is where you go in and you deliver that Christ consciousness into the age of Aquarius. You give birth to that awareness to that stream of consciousness in a collective manner because it will facilitate the evolution that is our purpose and design for physical bodies, for our spirit inside of physical bodies, knowing ourselves on the physical plane knowing ourselves as one on a physical plane. And all of us giving birth to the golden child, which is the child of one consciousness. One. Not plural, not divided, not separated, but one. And this comes from, like I said, the awareness of Isis and Osiris and Set and Neftis and all of this. And the way this was given to me, the way I'm, I'm receiving it, is that Egypt was the storehouse of universal knowledge. It was the university on the earth plane at that time. And people from all over, consciousness from all over, above and beyond and below and inside and outside and all of that, gathered at this place in the old kingdom, in the old world, to establish this consciousness, this knowledge, 
to know thyself. And in understanding that, and in understanding what happened between the four dynamics of Set, Osiris, Nephtis, and Isis, you have to understand the interplay of duality. You have to un understand the four chambers of the heart. You have to understand the energy and the metaphysical numbers between one and five. Zero <laughs> to five, both ways. And then it multiplies at that six and that seven. And at that seven, there's a resting period. But let me get back to this. I don't want to put too much in this. I want to keep it very, very simple. Um, and understanding that Osiris. is about the earth plane, okay? Osiris is the earth plane. Osiris would be Geb, okay? And Nut would be Isis, okay? And understanding that we are told that Nephtis transformed herself into Isis in order to give birth to Anubis, okay? And Anubis was the firstborn before Horus. Horus was born after. Horus and Anubis are not at odds with each other at all. They serve. Anubis is this period that we are in right now. Anubis is the overseer of this period. This is the, the death, so to speak, that takes us to the Aquarian Age, which is the Osarian age, which is the afterlife, so to speak. And everything that is happening is in a loop of time and it is on repeat. The United States, as I have been shown and given and told, is the new world. It is the new Egypt. It is the storehouse in the new world of the old world. Understand that the ancient ancestors were not limited by time or the concept of time. They understood it much more than we do. And they foresaw and they planned for this time because there was one consciousness. And so everything has been seeded to come to this point. And what this point is, is the Hiros Gamos. It is the unification 
of the one consciousness inside of each soul. It is the valuation and evaluation of the divine masculine and the divine feminine inside of each soul. And that is the bridge that provides you access to the new world. You cannot enter the new kingdom, the new world, the new aeon, the new age without this unification within yourself. And this is logic and intuition at its most fundamental stages. And once you integrate this, you rebirth yourself as a newborn golden child who's ready to go into this new kingdom. But on a collective basis, this has to happen. But please remember, we have left out one of the characters who is set. And set does not want the new kingdom. He's very, very happy with the old kingdom and with the separation of the divine feminine and the divine masculine. He is the one who dismembered the sacred masculine in order to create the first single mama, the first single mama. Understand that. He dismembered the divine masculine for this purpose. Look out into your world. This illusion, this maya, this matrix. And understand the dismemberment of the divine masculine. And now, understand and connect the dots of what the divine feminine had to do in order to reanimate the divine masculine, in order to give birth to the divine child to this unified consciousness that would fight the consciousness of the old kingdom, the old divisive way, the way that does not want unity. Unity is peace. Unity is unconditional love. Unity is compassion and compromise. Unity affords abundance to all. Unity is God, is the consciousness of God what we call God, it is the great spirit, the greatest spirit. Again, you have to still the mind. You have to understand that the mind Your mind is your Satan. 
Your mind is your devil. And it will lie and it will play tricks on many different levels and playing fields and consciousness. And it will manifest so many things in order for your true unified consciousness not to be born. It will commit every kind of sacrilege, every kind of blasphemy that it can. Sorry, I had something pop up on my screen. But that is that portion, beloved. But we have within us what it takes, just as Isis showed us, to give birth to this Christ consciousness, to this consciousness of one, to this consciousness that says, I am the mother and the father. We are one. When you deal with me, you're dealing with the mother and father consciousness because that is who I am. Not I am the mother or the sins of the mother or I am the father and the sins of the father. We are not separate. One of the things that, and I'm sorry if this is coming, I'm, I'm leaping and jumping to different things, but it's, there's so much and I'm trying to communicate it all. Let me get this off the screen because it's getting on my nerves. It's, it's aggravating. There we go. Um, grounding. <laughs> Grounding, grounding, grounding. Um, okay. One of the things that um, the understanding of the new earth is um, with the Native Americans. And when I say Native Americans, I'm not just speaking of what you call the Indians, because there were many, many, many indigenous ones walking this land and, and interbreeding and, and mixing and, and practicing. And some of them have been removed through genocide, but like I said, energy can't be destroyed. And that and those ones have just as much say as those who are here. In understanding history, so to speak, and understanding that those who supposedly found America were doing so to escape religious persecution. Understand that, please. Understand that it also was to find riches. Understand that the land was also flooded with criminals. Understand that on the arrival and the stories that we have of 
I guess the reception of the Native, the Thanksgiving, let's, okay, the Thanksgiving, they said, okay, the Thanksgiving, this was a covenant time, it was ancient, it was sacred, and what I'm being told is that it is to be seen as in the same light as the Last Supper. And the food and the prayers and everything else was just a foretaste of what was coming, the betrayal. Just like at the Last Supper, you had Judas going to betray Jesus, as the story goes, as as it has been told. But understand that with the one consciousness, there is no beginning and there is no end, and there is no concept as time. And that patience as we know it magnify it to the level of consciousness of the creator consciousness. And and you have a scope and a range of what patience in the evolution of your design really, (laughs) really, really is about. And to understand the consciousness that is playing out, so to speak, through each of us, individually and collectively, based upon our own ability to form a relationship or assume a relationship with that consciousness and understanding that it is the only consciousness. Getting back to it, Thanksgiving, understanding that the way the Native Americans shared the turkey, which is a symbol, which is a vulture symbol, which is Nekbet. They did it with a sacredness, understanding the corn, understand the cornucopia that was shared. This was saying, I welcome you as brother to my mother. I introduce you to my mother, consume my mother. And we are one. This was the true understanding of the thanks that was being given. I will see you as a brother. I welcome you to this land, my mother's land, my mother. I feed you from her. I show you her ways. I show you balance. I show you the spirit of this land. Some were able to grasp this new way because it was very similar to what was in their own consciousness from what came from Britain and and all over 
the other lands because the ancients traveled, beloveds. They seeded their consciousness all over the world, all over the globe. And those with similar conscious understood. But there were those who did not want this kind of peace, this kind of unity. And it was on both sides. Don't just think this is one-sided because it is not. There are souls who do not resonate with the unified consciousness. They feel they are the true consciousness and that the consciousness of unity is weak. But the consciousness of division is the best way, is the strongest. And of course, that way is a way of force. It is a way of violence. It is a way of violation. It is a way of rape. It is a way of murder. It is a way of lying. It is a way of theft. It is on that side of the scale. On the other side of the scale, you have the opposite of that. And again, over the billions and gazillions of lifetimes and ages that have existed on this plane, We have all of that inside of us. Each of us has ancestors who were most heinous as well as ancestors who were most angelic. And it is up to the individual which consciousness calls you, and then finding the balance between them, between those two zeros, <laughs> so to speak, the negative zero and the positive zero, being both of those, that is the divine child. Again, we, this video is coming forward because of what is taking place currently in our world. I live in America and this was given to me to speak on America. This is what the universe, universal consciousness is giving me to share. Right now, we have a woman called Elizabeth Warren, and I am not endorsing anyone politically because in, in my knowing, man at its current state cannot rule over man. We have to get to the one consciousness which will happen in the Aquarian age where we understand that it's not about ruling over another. It is about ruling over yourself. And each self understanding it is part of the one. And so in being part of the one, it has accountability to itself to master 
that self, to master the connection with that self. That is how you know yourself. Know thyself, not yourself. Yourself is separate from thyself. <laughs> yourself is the mind. Thyself is the universal consciousness, the one consciousness. Okay, let me keep going. Um, Elizabeth Warren has claimed, and it has been proven that I think she has like 4% Native American. And people want to say, you are not Native American. You are not this. You are not that. You are not, 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 not. Let me tell you something. There is one consciousness. And it is all. And it is nothing. And just as they say, one drop of black blood makes you black. One drop of any kind of blood makes you that. Because that was an ancestor. That was a link. From them to you. A spiritual link. A link in the lines of memories that go back more than numbers. So you don't know what ancestor is influencing her. You don't know what is speaking through her. You don't know what consciousness she has tapped into that links her to the one consciousness. Do not be so quick to judge what you have no understanding of. Just like I've had people tell me all my life, Valerie, you're not black. Valerie, you're not Native American. Valerie, you're not Mexican Indian. You're not this, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not. And my reply has always been, which one of my ancestors do you want me to deny to fit into your box of who I am? How I should be, what I should look like, what I should talk like, act like, in order to please your sense of yourself. Ignorance. Wake up. That which causes division doesn't care what it divides as long as it can divide. And it knows as long as it can divide, it can conquer. If it can divide you, if your mind can divide you from the silence that is the one consciousness, all you hear is this chatter. You will never focus. 
on the truth. Because you're so busy trying to analyze and rationalize and and give credence to this monkey mind that is not you. Is of you. But it is not you. And this is the message of Isis, of Aset, the very first single mother. Also, she wants you to understand this. She has been worshipped all over the world. And she is a combination of her ancestral lineage. It was not just Aset is this. No, Aset was Hathor. Aset was Sekhmet. Aset was Nekbet. Aset was Ma'at. Aset was Neftiz. There is no division in consciousness when you know thyself and you are able to pull and draw from these sources. When you are able to walk in the stories, the store of Ra, the store of Re, the Akashic memories, as you call them. No one can take these away from you. Wasn't written on paper or papyrus. Was written in stone. in a way that can't even be duplicated in this age of technology. Forty-two fifty-five. Also, she wants you to know that find her story, assess what you consider power to be, understand that she did not go to war with Seth. Not once did she challenge him. She knew that to deal with him would take a united consciousness. She and Osiris unified to defeat him, it. That consciousness which opposes unity. Call it what you will. Understand that Isis knew the secret name of Ra. But she did not challenge sex. Instead, she used 
maternal wisdom, feminine wisdom, in to ishan. advised her. Don't take that on like that. Unite with that which was dismembered, that which was tried to be removed from your memory. which it will never be because that was unconditional love. That was divine unity. And you must give birth to that. And that which you produce that which you give birth to will have the sacred alchemy, the one consciousness that can eat, that which wants division can eat it, it can contain it. And it has taken us to evolve to this point from the gods, from the dinosaurs, back into this state of seeking identity, back into the state of understanding what Jubilee is, understanding the blood covenants that have taken place, understanding the lives of the martyrs, that have brought us to this moment. No life even stillborn has an effect on the womb still. It leaves its essence in the womb, it is the unseen. It has a consciousness because it came from consciousness. Wrap your mind around it. And you will get an inkling of who you truly are and who you truly should be striving to be yourself, the divine consciousness. And that is a unified consciousness. And in becoming that unified consciousness, we will provide the link for the next seven generations and forward. Just as our ancestors foresaw this moment and left us signs, left us prophecies, left us ways to remain open. 
are still here on this earth plane as echoes and, and, and vibrations, colors, tastes, smells. Everything serves the one consciousness because everything came from it and exists in it. Even your manifestations. This matrix has to play itself out. You have to involve inside of it. You have to see it for what it is and then become that new one, that Neo. That Neo who connected with the original consciousness. And then nothing could stop it because it knew it was the one. You have to know you are the one. And knowing is more than believing. A belief can be disproved. A belief can be influenced. What you know Can nobody shake it, not even your own mind. Just like what I said about people always telling me, Valerie, you're not black enough. You're not native enough. Valerie, you act like a white woman. You talk like this. You do this. You blah, 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 blah. <laughs> like I said. I deny none of me. And I've become more acquainted with <laughs> so many of the me's that I can only contrast that against the I am. in order to see the I am in each of those means. And that ain't mine. That's that soul bridge that has to be born and has to be crossed. But first, baby, it's got to be built on solid foundation. And that foundation is unconditional love for yourself and for your self-discovery. And that self-discovery includes what we have called the sins of the Father. See, this is where forgiveness comes into play. This is where the Christ consciousness said, you must forgive 77 times seven. Those generations. Because it is only in that that you are able to forgive yourself as being a separate, as thinking you are a separate consciousness from the one consciousness. This is waking up. This is realizing with real eyes exactly
you are consciousness. You are the consciousness. You are an essence of it. You are, what is the word? In the image of it. You are the image of that consciousness manifested inside of a soul. Okay, again, um, that was the Elizabeth Warren piece um, because there's so many that want to judge. Again, I am not taking a political stance. I am not endorsing or advocating any candidate or the political system itself because it is corrupt. But I just want you to be able to understand yourself more and how we like to throw stones at others. Like we live in glass houses and can't no thrones, stones be thrown at us. Mirrors reflect. Mirrors can also direct your attention. into a deeper consciousness of yourself. It will help you with the stillness. Looking in your own eyes, looking into your own soul, and reflecting on what you find. And then aligning all of that with the mind and know that that is just the mind. It is not the I am self. And which do you give preference to? The mind of men, the mouth of men, the hearts of men, the souls of men, the stories of men, the violence of men, the division of men, or the knowing that all is one. One is all and one is nothing. And that is the parameter that you deal with. And those are the only limitations that are placed upon you. Okay, that is going to be. Um, this portion of the speaking and, and the sharing from um, what I woke up with this morning. Seems like I'm waking up with um, all kinds of downloads or, or realizations or communications or whatever vernacular or, or whatever context that you have to put this in in order to under, understand it. Um, and I'm no longer trying to <laughs> categorize it myself. I, I just 
use words to try to share it so to help you um with it but that again is is this portion um of it and again this was a set um with the story of what happened to her this consciousness um and how it is replaying right in front of us today. And many are aware but unaware of what is taking place. And this is to offer you insight. It gives you something to reflect upon, not just your mind, but your soul, because your soul is connected to this. It is linked to this. And that is why this consciousness that is revealing itself as a set is speaking. Okay, I hope I've made this as crystal clear as I can. Um, the message itself is one of reuniting the sacred masculine and the sacred feminine, divine masculine, divine feminine, into one consciousness. The logic and the intuitive. Not one against the other. Not male versus female. Not men are from Mars and women are from Venus. But Nut and Geb. The heavens and the earth. Unified. Understand that when you look at the story of Newt and Geb, uniting, giving birth to light and darkness, light and shadow, right and left, up and down, suns, moons, stars, planets, galaxies, dimensions, Black holes, supernovas, asteroids, understand why things were recorded in the heavens as well as on the earth plane. Understand that there are different dimensions to heaven just as there are different dimensions to earth. And the merging, the marrying, the unification has to take place in the consciousness. Not just the physical body. But in the consciousness itself, that is the oneness. And it is from this oneness, again, that utopia, paradise, bliss, be born and will establish, re-establish balance in the new world, the new kingdom, the new being, the new birth.
birth, death, and rebirth. In order to get to this rebirth and on the other side of it, we have to face death. And we have been programmed to fear this death. It is nothing to fear. Your cells die every day. Are you aware of them? Do you go around mourning them, trying to gather them back to you? Your ancestors were such cells, except they were cells in consciousness. And that consciousness still exists. And you just have to wake up. And you wake up by being silent, silencing the mind. Silencing that anxiety, silencing that fear, silencing that doubt. Silencing the inability to trust yourself, not another. This is not about another. This is about you as an individual. Expression of divine consciousness tapping into itself. You can only do that when you learn how to quiet the mind. And you do that by understanding that the mind can make as much noise as it wants to. It can act as crazy as it wants to. It can be the baddest two-year-old to ever exist and throw all kind of tantrums. But you're going to walk away from it. Because you know it's going to get its little ass up and it's going to follow you. You don't follow the tantrum. You give it no attention. And you walk away. In peace. And in silence. And then you let go of all anger, doubt, frustration that a tantrum was even thrown because you understand that that is not woke. That is sleep. That's what sleep looks like. That's what sleep acts like. That's all that being sleep knows how to do. It wants attention for itself because. It does not know. It is all and nothing. That it is the I am. See, it's separate from that. It separated itself from that. Seeking attention. Put your attention on the I am that resides within you. Quiet yourself enough beyond, and, and I'm about to get real personal right now, 
beyond your family, beyond your friends, beyond your lovers, understand that they too must choose to wake up and that they have the same ability to tap into that consciousness as you. That which speaks to you speaks to them. But they must choose to listen, to hear, to quiet their minds. You cannot do it for them. All you can do is love them and encourage them and lead by example. Hold on to nothing. And you have everything. Namaste, beloved. Namaste, namaste, namaste. Um, like I said, this is this. Who I I couldn't have foreseen this. If I wanted to, <laughs> if I wanted to, okay, I couldn't have foreseen this if I wanted to. And all I can say is that you have to do the work. You have to do the work of detaching, unlatching. <laughs> This world, this metric system, from your I am, because that is what it is doing. It is sucking on the I am. It is nourishing itself on your concept of what the I am is. And you keep the mind alive because you pay more attention to the noise than to the silence. Okay, again, that is going to do it and um, I will be following this video up with the cards to see what they say. Um, the last deck that I will use will be the Isis Oracle deck. Um, and I don't know if it will be a separate video by itself or not. I don't know how the cards are going to read and how long that's going to take. Um, but the Isis Oracle will give um, the essence from the one consciousness that is to be meditated upon. I'll put it that way. Okay. Again, namaste and abundant blessings.